Welcome back to Crafters Coast to Coast. We're on the road finding real people making really cool crafts. Our next crafter comes from Louisiana, the Pelican State. Now we traveled to Louisiana and don't remember seeing any pelicans, but we did see plenty of awesome crafters, including this one who works in enamel. Hi, welcome to the Bywater District of New Orleans, Louisiana. My name is Catherine DeYoung. I'm a wife and mother of two-year-old identical twin boys. Ah! <laughs> In my free time, which I don't have a lot of, I'm an enamelist. As far as I know, the only one in New Orleans. I bet you don't know what an enamelist is, but it involves making cool plates like this. This is my studio where it all happens. We've been here five years and as you can see, I haven't cleaned it in five years. But I know where everything is and that's all that matters. I start my project with a sheet of copper. Then I take my circle, which is part of the lamp that fell down on me one day, so I thought I could use it. After the circle's drawn, I grab my jeweler's saw and I saw out the circle. Between lifting the babies and this, it's like having a home gym. Almost finished. This is a magnolia. They're in bloom right now, and this little crown jewel of the south is everywhere. I need to clear a little space to do my drawing. And I need a pencil. Okay, the drawing is finished now. I'm going to take asphaltum, which is a type of tar that's liquefied, and paint it over the lines to protect them from the acid that I'm going to put the plate in. Once this is eventually dipped in the acid, the raised areas that are left will be the shape of the flower. The asphaltum is dry now, and I have to put a sticker on the back to keep the acid from eating it on the back side. Now I need to take some little balls of wax and stick them on the front side of the piece. The piece has to etch upside down, so we need a little stilt to hold the piece up so it doesn't sit on the bottom of the pan. Plate's ready for the acid bath. The acid's going to eat away at the exposed copper for about two hours. Two hours later now, the boys are down for a nap, and it's time to clean off the tar. Turpentine takes the tar off. Pumice, Ooh. and elbow grease. The plate is etched and cleaned off, and you can see where the tar saved the lines that make the design. Now I need to put it on my dapping block and give it a little bit of curve. Cloth diapers come in handy for padding when you're hammering. The plate's dapped and has a slight curve to it now, and it's ready to fill in the little spaces with flux. It's sort of like a primer coat so that the color will stand out and be more vivid. The first coat, the flux, is finally dried. And it's ready to be fired now. Set it on the trivet, and I need to put on my safety glasses first. The temperature of the kiln is at around 1480, and we want to fire the piece until it melts to an even coat over the whole piece. And in about three minutes, it'll be fired and ready to come out. It's been three minutes now, and it's time to come out of the kiln. While it's cooling, I'm going to go mix my colors for the final coat. I'm going to color this with glass. Some people say it's painting, but it's applying the glass and blending it on the plate 
10 grains at a time to make it look like a realistic flower. All the colors are applied now. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? Wait till you see it when it's fired. Three minutes and it'll be all finished. I have to wait for it to cool for a few minutes, and then I sand up the copper edges, patina it with copper black patina, and then the patina is sealed with a coat of auto wax, and then you're all finished, ready to sign it. And this is how it looks when it's all done, and you can even add a design on the back. A Louisiana Magnolia. What a transformation, and you don't have to be a Southern Belle to appreciate it.